hour, but we certainly want to get you started. And let's take a look at, oh, here is the chipmunk range. We like to do a few little, sort of cover off a little bit about what our chipmunk is, you know, what some characteristics of our chipmunk, where he lives, some qualities of him. So this is where we would find the chipmunk. The reason it says least chipmunk is that's because that is the particular name of this, this uh, chipmunk. It's part of a species, a subspecies that is known as the least chipmunk, capital L-E-A-S-T. Okay, here's, a, here's some interesting chipmunk facts and some interesting chipmunk pictures. The average size of a chipmunk is, is pretty small. They're only about two to six inches and they have about a three inch tail. So a good half of them is about, you know, well, no, in total, I'm sorry. In total, they would be about six to between five and uh, eight inches in length. And they can live to be two to three years. They dig extensive burrow systems underground. And as you can see, their cheeks can bulge up to three times the size of its head. And here's a beautiful photograph of one doing just that with a cob of corn. Here is a leaping chipmunk. Uh, they can, they uh, can gather up to 150 acorns in a single day. And they are what we call diurnal. That means that they, they w live in both day and they work and play both in day and night. Um, here we have another picture. These are some photographs of, of chipmunks, the least chipmunk. And their diet consists of nuts, seeds, grains, fruits, insects, mushrooms, plant roots, and bulbs. Here is an example of a chipmunk sketch of Robert Bateman's. He did this uh, some time ago in a nature sketch journal. Now, when we talk about nature sketching, uh, the, the idea is that we're not too concerned with getting something exactly right. We're more concerned about capturing the spirit and the energy of, of a point in place at a point in time. And this is what we see here. On the lower left is a chipmunk in uh, Robert Bateman's woodshed, and that would probably be on Salt Spring Island. Just a lovely little, very, a very quick little sketch. He would have done that in pen and then maybe finished it off with some watercolor. Here, now let's take a look at some Robert Bateman paintings himself of, of chipmunks. And this is the least chipmunk. And you can see Robert Bateman always likes to show his creatures, whatever they happen to be, and he's done hundreds of creatures, of course. Um, he always likes to show them in their ecosystem, where they live, what, what, are, they, what are the surrounds for, their, for our creatures. Um, this is another one, also of um, a little chipmunk surrounded by, in a, autumnal weather, surrounded by uh, leaves. And here is on the alert. This is the image that we're going to be working from today. So when we, when we attempt to uh, capture something in a two-dimensional way, rather than a three-dimensional, because of course we want this creature to look like he's three-dimensional, but, he, but we only have a two-dimensional surface to work with. So there are a number of art, art elements that we need to consider, uh, you know, line, form, uh, shape, texture, those sorts of things. So today, we're going to really concentrate on sort of capturing the shape of our chipmunk. So that is what we have the next hour to here to do. And I'm going to show you what I've done. Now, I'm hoping that most of you will have received or, or been able to download the images that I have taken. I've taken this image and broken it up into a series of shapes. And here we are. I lightened the image underneath. And then I lay some shapes over top. You can see that there is a, there's an oval, there's, some, there's a circle, there's a, some triangles. And we're going to work with this to create our own chipmunk. And he's going to look fabulous, believe me. So once we remove the photograph from behind our chipmunk, this is what we end up with. So I would like us to work with this. We'll start. This, this is my idea of what, when I look at that chipmunk, those are the shapes that I saw. Now you may look at that chipmunk and think, well, no, I don't, I don't see that. I see maybe more of a rectangle or I see different shapes. So that is certain, you are absolutely welcome to do that. And I, and I hope that you do. If you do continue to, to do some drawings, some uh, natural drawings, animals, creatures, plant life, um, I hope that you do sit down and really take a look at breaking something down into its what we call composite shapes, the shapes that make up that creature. So. If we can go to the overhead camera, please, Duncan. My lovely producer, Duncan, is getting us going here. And we're going to take a look at how we can get started. Can we have both a side-by-side, -side, the image on the screen and the desktop? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So I've got my 
I, I have actually, I've lightly drawn in my composite shapes here just so that I can both show you while we're working and not worry about getting mine exactly right because I'm, I'm busy talking to you at the same time. So let's take a look at our composite, uh, the shapes that we have to make our little uh, chipmunk. So here, I've got it right here as well so I can help, help uh, transfer it onto my paper. So what I'd like to start with is that oval, a big oval shape. And I'm going to just darken this a little bit I'm not going to darken it too much because we do want to be able to uh, remove these lines. What I'm la laying down here with my pencil are what we call, or some artists may call scaffolding lines. So we're sort of creating the, um, the, the, the scaffolding, if you like, that, that we're going to put our chipmunk on top of. So do your, do your original shapes here, your composite shapes, do them quite lightly because knowing that you're going to have to erase those, or you're going to want to erase those. So let's go in. I'm going to darken this a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to start by this oval shape. Now the oval shape to me is kind of the most important shape of our little creature here. It's this area here that covers kind of the body. So we're going to start with that. I'll just darken this up a little bit and I'm going to do a nice oval. So I lay these images on top of the photograph with Photoshop. That is how I, I get started with by, by creating these composite shapes so we can better understand the shape of our little creature. And as, as we work on it, you'll, you'll, you'll see why composite shapes are really helpful because especially when it comes to the head, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more, but especially when it comes to understanding where the features reside on the face of your creature, it's very helpful. So I've done my oval here. Let's take a look now at the head, the head shape. And what I've done here is I've got a circle and I've broken it up into four parts, like a pizza pie into four pieces. So let's draw a circle here. And it's gonna touch, it's going to butt right up against the oval that we've already got in position here. So let's draw our circle, nice light lines. Right now I'm using an HB pencil and I'm hoping you're able to see it okay. I'm gonna go a little bit closer. So I'm using an HB pencil. The HB pencil is fairly easy to erase. And um, so when it comes time, I'll be able to remove some of those lines. So I've got my circle here for the head. I'm going to break that circle into four parts now, right down the middle, right? So there's where, like the X axis, think back to your geometry classes, X axis and Y axis, right down the center here. And you'll see why shortly it's really useful to break that, especially the face down into shapes. I have decided that, to, to my mind, this part of the chipmunk is kind of a, it, to me it's almost like a triangle. So I've created a, um, an equal sided triangle here. They're not, it's not an equilateral, it's an isosceles triangle I think they call it, where this, these two sides are the same length. Um, and I'm going to, that's going to be where the snout and the nose of our chipmunk fit in. So I'm going to draw that, knowing that the end of that uh, triangle starts right down about here. I'm going to pull that up a little, pull that across the side of that, uh, the side of our circle, and it's going to bisect that y, that x axis, and then carry on along here, finishing up our triangle. Now. Don't worry about getting these exactly right. This is not, uh, it's not critical that you get your composite shapes in exactly the right position. It's really more about just getting a really, a good foundational understanding of the shape of your creature. So we've now got our oval. We've got our circle with the, uh, the, the crosshairs here, the X and Y axis. The triangle, which represents the kind of nose and snout and mouth area. And then I'm gonna draw a circle in here, which is, where the eye resides. And here's a, here's a good example of why, um, why composite shapes and breaking things down are quite useful because without those, the X and the Y axis, you might have thought that that eye was higher up. You might have thought, oh yeah, the eye belongs up here, but it really doesn't. We now know from, we have proof, we have scientific evidence that the eye is actually in that lower right hand quadrant. So that's where we're going to make sure, we're gonna put that. We'll get to that shortly, but I will point out that that, is, that represents sort of the eye socket, not, the, not just, the, pup, not just the, um, the, the eyeball itself, but the eye socket. So we'll, we'll, we'll get to that shortly. So we've got our oval. We've got our head broken into four pieces. We've got our 
uh, triangle for the nose and snout and our, our eye circle for the, for the um, eyeball. Now, one last shape that I wanted to put in here was the sort of the front haunch. Now that front haunch, it's a triangle as well and it overlaps our oval. And I'm gonna say it overlaps right about here and you can see that it moves up into the body of the, the, the uh, oval that represents the body shape and it goes right across over and it actually touches the circle where the, uh, head, where the head resides. We're gonna touch the very edge of that circle. See that line goes right over and then it goes straight down. You wanna get the approximately the right length. Again, it's not, it's not super critical that you have these exactly the right shape or the, the right size, but it, it is just useful for getting in place. I've actually drawn a few little lines here, and those just represent the toes of our, of our chipmunk. So I'm just gonna draw a few lines in here, and they're just very gentle little lines, and again, you don't have to get those exactly right, but we, we will know that that's where our chipmunk's toes live. The one last, or there are two more shapes here, two more shapes. We're gonna look at the tail. The tail uh, is a long and fluffy uh, appendage but I've only drawn in a line that indicates kind of the very core, the very core, the very center of our tail. So we will be building around that core. To, to have drawn a shape in here was a bit, a bit, uh, bit more awkward. So I thought that just a, a line down the center would be able to guide us just as well as any, any shape. Okay, so let's draw that in. It's gonna start right about here on our chipmunk and then just pull that line down a bit. And again, it, the, the length of your tail isn't that critical because uh, uh, chipmunks may, or individuals, the one tail might be a little bit longer than someone else's tail, so it's not critical. The little foot, I've indicated again with some, just with some straight lines here, where that, uh, that little back leg is uh, where it lives. And it's gonna be slightly below the, uh, the tail, where the tail uh, extends from the ed end of the body there, comes down to about here, and we'll just draw a little line here, and it's kind of like a garden fork, a little, one of those little garden claws with five, five little lines on it. And it's almost like, a, hmm, almost like a leaf or something. Very, very sweet little feet. Okay, so there we have sort of our basic shape, of our basic composite shapes of our chipmunk. And I'm, I'm hoping you can see that okay. I'm gonna back up just a little bit so you can see a little bit better. The first thing I always like to do, because to me it's, uh, it, it kind of in, instills the character in, in the creature that I'm drawing. And I always like to work with the eye first. So I'm going to go, I'm gonna sharpen my pencil. I'm now moving on to, I'm gonna use a 2B pencil. It's a little bit darker. You've been advised, I think the, the requirements for this class were an HB, which is absolutely fine, but I'm going to switch to a slightly dark one, mostly so you can see me a little bit better on, on, um, over the camera. So I'm gonna, I've got a sharp uh, 2B, actually I'm gonna make it a little bit sharper, I've got my pencil sharpener here. A Couple of the other things I have handy, which I'll show you. Some of you may still be working on your composite shape, so I'll just talk a little bit about the supplies I'm using. I'm using uh, this HB pencil that I started with because it's nice and light and it's a Bateman Foundation HB pencil. And I'm using, I've got an eraser, a white vinyl eraser, and I've clipped that with scissors so I get a nice bit of a, little bit of an edge here and it's a little bit sharper, which helps get, uh, you know, erase a, you know, crisper edges. Um, I've also got um, an eraser, it's a very skinny eraser. And it's a, just got, it's a white vinyl eraser in the tip. It's a Tombow brand and it's quite handy. You can get some nice skinny lines that, uh, that you can lift off. And I've also got another eraser that's a little bit heavier. These are, these are good, but the, the best eraser of all is just your standard white vinyl eraser. And you can, you can trim it either with a pair of scissors or uh, even with a pair of, uh, even with a boxing, uh, box, uh, box cutter or something like that. So those are the, the things I use. One thing I also like to use in addition to my pencil sharpener is when I erase something, I just have a little brush here that I can go and swipe off the, the crumbs of my eraser. There, instead of doing this with my hand and getting all on the side of my hand, this is a nice little, just a one inch, you know, paint, indoor paint brush for, for wall paint. So that's what I like to use. I always have these things handy. Now let's go back to our chipmunk. I hope everyone's got their, uh, their composite shapes in just fine. Actually, before we do the eye, what I do like to do is 
now go around and create the form. Do the outside line around our chipmunk. So let's have a go at that. I'm going to go in a little bit closer. So I'm now going to refer to this image on the screen. Can you show the, the screen for just a sec? Oh, it will be coming up shortly, Duncan. Thank you. So we're going to show you uh, on the screen, we've got the, uh, the chipmunk with the photograph behind it now. So we're going to go in with our pencils and we're going to start laying down lines that we will keep. We're not going to erase these lines. We're going to keep these lines. Now, because I'm, I think it's because I'm right-handed, but I, I generally like to start sort of on the left-hand side of my creature and go around sort of clockwise to start filling in the, uh, creating the, the form, out, doing the outline of the shape of our, or our creature. So I want to start with the tail. Now, remember that I said, that tail kind of represents the core, or the, the mark that I've written, I've drawn here. That line represents the very core of my uh, chipmunk tail. So that's what I'm doing here. So when I start drawing in the edge of my tail, we're going to keep in mind that it's either side is it's kind of equidistant from that line. So we'll go around that, and I'll explain that as I go. Taking a look at where our tail begins, it, you'll notice it's just below the line that I've drawn for the composite drawing line. So it's going to start right about here. That's about where our tail is going to start. And I'm going to start moving gently around that, that interior line. And it's almost like a, almost a banana shape, isn't it? And here's an opportunity to start adding a little bit of texture here as you're drawing. You can actually, with the edge of your pencil, you can draw some little lines because we know that that chipmunk tail is fluffy. You can tell by looking at it. It's a fluffy tail. I'm going a little bit too tight here. I'm going to go a little bit bigger around the end here. I'm just drawing some gentle lines, going around the tail here. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep the, this distance here the same as this distance here. I'm going to, I went a little bit too tight here. I'm going to erase that, fix that in here. Got some nice furry lines in here. So now I'm going along the top of my tail. And again, I'm going to try to recognize this distance to keep it the same up here. Because that line here is the very core of our tail. Just going up in here. And I'm, while I'm doing this, I'm keeping an eye on my, my um, reference image. It really helps. to My eyes just, uh, I'm looking at my, my drawing. And I'm also looking, I've got this very, very close by. And I'm just looking very very rapidly, my eyes flip between the two quite, quite readily, quite, quite uh, frequently. So going up the side here, I've got my tail in place. And now I'm going to crawl up the back of my chipmunk here. Now that circle, that, that oval that I laid over with, the, uh, with my PowerPoint, it, it clings very closely to the top of my chipmunk. So we'll, we'll end up keeping that line. I'm just going to draw a few little uh, um, lines here to indicate that there's fur there and it's not until we get over to this part of our chipmunk that we realize we're now we now have some chipmunk coming outside of our circles and between the oval and the head there's a little patch a little patch of where there is chipmunk that falls outside our composite shapes here and it's almost like a triangle triangular shape isn't it a rounded triangular shape so i want to recreate this position this shape in here and i'm going to do that right about here and just a nice gentle line. It's almost like a little bridge between the oval and the circle. And I'm going to draw that in here. And now I'm on top of the head. And looking at my, my picture, my image here, I can see that the tip of his ear sticks up above the circle. And I also see that it's to the left of my Y axis. So I'm just going to stick that on the top here. Just a little bit. Just a little bit comes over the top of the circle but you'll notice behind that ear i'm going to pull out a little bit here you notice that behind this ear is the other ear so i want to include that in here too and the ear that is on the other side of our chipmunk's head the, on the left side of his head is the uh that second ear so and it goes just beyond the shape of the just above the uh, y axis i'm just going to draw a little kind of a lump here a little kind of a Kind of almost like a petal shape here, right down in here. And then, then we're going to carry on around the forehead of our chipmunk. I'll go a little tighter again so you can see me. 
going to carry on around the forehead of the chipmunk and it comes down into that triangle now. It comes into the triangle. And what we've got here is obviously our chipmunk does not have a pointy beak like this. And I'm looking at how in the triangle that we've created, there's what we call negative space. And I've actually colored that in. I've shaded that in with my pencil right on my reference image. And you can see that this triangle now has a little bit of area where there is no chipmunk. So we, we call that negative space. So we're going to try to recreate that negative space on our triangle. So let's have a go at that. So I think it's going to come down about here. And I'm, looking, I'm now looking at this shape. This is the shape I'm considering right now. And I'm going to say it's right about, and there's a little bump here where its nose comes down. And then it goes, goes up to the side of that, the side of that um, triangle. That looks pretty good. And there's a little bump there. That's where his nose is. And then that muzzle, and you can imagine that. You can, if you have a cat or a dog, you, you know exactly what that little, little flap here, that muzzle that, that uh, comes down over the side of his mouth. And it comes a little bit lower than our triangle. So let's draw that in, a little bit lower. Not a lot, but a little. And you'll notice that now we're getting some more chipmunk that falls outside, that falls outside our uh, composite shape. So let's keep on drawing that. And it begins right about at the bottom of our Y axis. And it goes down to, I'm going to say it goes down to about here. Sometimes I like to draw sort of an A to a B line. So it's, it's clear to me, you know, I'm going to start here and then I'm going to end here. I'm going to choose a spot on that triangle where I believe that line is going to end. And I, the reason I do this is because it, it kind of breaks things down into nice sort of baby steps, shorter, shorter little steps. And it also gives you time to consider, does that make sense? Does that work? Am I doing this correctly? So um, that's why I like to do those little kind of a baby steps. So I'm going to say that the, 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 this sort of chest area that we see on our chipmunk. And again, there's another, just a little piece here. You can even consider that shape here. So it starts right about here. We're at the bottom of our Y axis and it makes its way over to this area. And that's a nice gentle swoop of, of chipmunk right in there, right about there. And then you can see that line carries on inside, inside the uh, triangle that we have for the front haunch. And you see this nice, nice gentle swoop here. And it goes right down to the, almost above the, the toe that we've indicated there. So nice, gentle line, just take your time drawing that. And it's not, and not you don't want it to be a harsh, a harsh or a hard line, just a nice gentle line. Okay, so we've now got, or oh, our head is looking, my head's looking, I'm quite happy with that, looking good. It's filling in those spaces quite nicely. We've got our, our shapes, our original composite shapes, and now we're putting the, we're kind of creating the form, the outline of the form of our creature. Okay, so we've now we've got our little toes sticking out here. If you want to, you could do, this is, this is a little harder to see, but you could go around those lines, just like we did with the tail, go around those lines and just sort of, and I tried to keep the, that, this, the uh, lines for the toes um, equidistant as well, like right down the center of the toe. So I'm gonna move that a little bit closer, you can see what I mean. I'm gonna go right around those toes with some lines here. There. Okay. So that's what we've got so far coming down our little leg here. And I'm going to carry up the side of this leg here. So we can see there's a little bit of fur sticking out. Whoops. A little bit of fur sticking out the side of that uh, triangle. I'm just going to just put a few lines here to indicate that so we know that. Now, we now see that the, uh, the underside, the, the belly of our chipmunk, I'm going to pull out again so we get a broader view. The belly of our chipmunk comes in here. It starts right about where that triangle for the haunch and the oval meet. See that? It's right about there. It's where those two, those two cross over. So I'm going to try and try and find that spot on my drawing, which is right about here. And we're going to create another shape in here. Let's take a look at the shape that we've got on our reference drawing. I'm just going to draw some lines in here. Again, this is kind of negative space where there isn't any chipmunk. That's the, that's the shape that we want to create at the bottom of our oval, on the underside of our oval, which will represent the uh, belly or the shape of the belly of our little chipmunk. Okay, so let's go in here and I'm gonna say that it starts right about here. And I think maybe, 
Let's see now, maybe right to about here. This is this one's a little trickier. You got to do a little bit of eyeballing here. And we can always go in and change that. If you're not happy with that, you can go in and change that because the eraser is such a wonderful, <laughs> a wonderful tool to be working with. It's one thing I love about working with, with graphite is just how there's this beautiful dance between your pencil and your eraser. And you can lay something down, you can lift it off, you can lift something off, you can lay something down. It's really, it's really how it's really a wonderful um, pairing of the two. Okay, so now we have, you know what, I think maybe this needs to go a little bit higher, a little bit higher. There we go, right about there. Okay, so I'm now going to go around the, the lower haunch, that the lower leg of our chipmunk here, and it pretty much hugs the side of our oval as well. And I'm going to carry that on up to about here. If there's going to be a little bit of fur that sticks out, a little bit there. And then we get up to that back leg. So we've got that really neat little shape that we see in this back leg. And um, I've done the same thing that I did with the tail and that I did with this paw, where I've tried to keep, try to represent the very core of our foot. So I'm going to go in here and just sort of go around the outside. I think I'll go a little bit tighter so you can see. So I'm going to try to go around those appendages, those little toes. Maybe that's a little bit too far. Just a little bit of flesh around those toes. This, is, this, this one over here is kind of like his thumb almost. Okay, so we've pretty much gone around our chipmunk now. I'm gonna back up so you can see my chipmunk as a whole. And we've got, um, yeah, we've done our form. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about that so far. I think that's, I wanna make sure that's in the middle so you can all see that. Now, let's take a look at the eye. As I mentioned, I do like to do the eye. Once I have the, the shapes, and the, uh, the uh, form figured out, I like to take a look at the eye because the eye is real window to the soul and it kind of helps you get, uh, become familiar with, your, with whatever it is you're drawing. So I'm gonna take a close look at the eye. I'm gonna sharpen my pencil. I wanna make sure it's a really nice tight, really nice point on the end of my pencil. And I think that at this point, I'm going to remove the scaffolding from right around the inside the eye here because we're going to be uh, working on the the pupil and the iris of the eye and I don't want to have to go and erase anything after it so I'm just going to remove that part of the eye right now and I'll go a little bit tighter so you can see what I'm doing so now looking at our eye I'm actually going to look at I go to this one here whoopsie there taking a look at the actual drawing the original painting of Robert Bateman's You'll see you've got a good look at the eye there. It's up tight, it's um, up close, and there's no, no, no lines to throw you off. And you'll see that there's a little tiny, um, there's a little tiny white spot right about there, and it falls just underneath the Y axis. There's a little tiny white spot, and that represents, of course, the, um, the, the reflection on the eye. Also, we're gonna notice that the, and I'll go back to the composite, drawing here, there we go. You can see that the, that the uh, white uh, fur around the eyes kind of falls inside the circle that I drew here. So let's try and get that in place as well. Taking a look at our composite lines here. Got the lights in here, the light white around the, the fur around, the, around that eye. It's kind of oval shaped. And then the rest inside is going to be black. Or, well, the, actually, the chipmunk's eye is probably a very dark brown. I've left that spot there, and I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that white because we want to be able to show, tell, indicate that that is the very darkest, very lightest part of our, our chipmunk's eye. So I'm now going to go in with the tip of my pencil. I'm going to shade that in. I'm going in just a, just a gentle circles with my pencil. I'm not pressing too hard. You don't need to press too hard. What you want, you'll want to do is if you want something darker, you just can go over it again. So I'm just laying down some dark here, staying inside the whites where we know that the, the fur is, the white fur that lines the, outlines the eye. And you'll notice it's a tiny bit darker. It's a tiny bit darker right where the eyeball meets the 
meets the lids. It's a tiny bit darker. It's, it's really, that's really hard to see, but it, it is what's going on. So there we have, we've already got some personality in our little chipmunk here, which is lovely. So I've got that in here. And I, as I say, I do like to get the eye in place so I can really uh, come to recognize what's going on in my little guy's head. So I've got his eye here. I want to move over to the ears while we still have our composite lines here. And again, this is a really useful understanding. So when I go to look at the ear, see where the ear is inside those composite shapes. I'm going to back up a little bit. You'll notice that the, the ear is, it covers, it's in really in this upper left-hand quadrant. That's where most of the ear resides but a little bit falls into the lower one. So when you, when you, if you didn't have these shapes, again, you might think that the ear was over here, or you might think that it was way over here. You might not realize how close to the center of your chipmunk's head this, uh, this ear is. So let's take a look at, there's the very center of where the, the two X and Y axis cross. Moving over to the side here, there's a little bit of a dip down here where that very end of the ear uh, uh, just falls slightly below the X, the X axis. And then it's almost like a keyhole there. And then we're going to go up a little bit and draw a little bit of a line here. And that line represents the darkness of the inside ear here. I'm trying to keep that. I, wa I want to just draw these lines here, the dark of the ear, not the exterior line. Because you see it's that that ear is rimmed with white, with white fur. It's high lit there. You can see that it's... Um, it's, it's, it's a lighter fur, both the pigmentation is lighter, but it's also because of the way the light is acting or bouncing off of our chipmunk, it's a little bit lighter here. Though it's also, as I say, it's also lighter pigment. So we've got our basic shape here. I think maybe a little bit further over here. And that's that shape here. And then there's a little bit of a, a piece in there. And then the, we have at the top of the ear, comes down here and we have, again, we're looking at that white spot. I'm trying to create that white rim around our ear. And I've, we're gonna do that like this, go around our ear here. I'm gonna give it another little bit of a, another bit of a, a layer, if you like, around the top. And this part in here will be darker and this part in here will be lighter. We'll get to that shading shortly. Same over here on this ear. We're going to give it a little bit of a line here that indicates that's where it's lighter. And we'll go and fill that in shortly with our shading. So we've got our ears in place. Let's get our nose and our um, sort of muzzle in place. We can't see his mouth per se, but we can see uh, like where there are dots and that sort of thing, where the, where the whiskers come out. So here's its nose. And then we have kind of, um, we have some dots in here. We can do something that's called stippling. And stippling is when you bounce up and down with your pencil like this. It's quite random, but you can get a nice effect. And before we go too much further with that, I think we are now in a position, I'm just taking a good look here, I think we're now in a position to remove our contour line. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll come back to uh, doing some shading and putting our whiskers in. I didn't want to uh, lay down or put our whiskers in and then go ahead and erase them. So let's get rid of our contour lines first. I'll back up a bit so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to use a combination of erasers, both my big white one and a little tighter one for where we're in a tighter spot. There go the composite shapes inside here. I can get rid of the, and as soon as you get rid of those shapes, you're starting to realize, oh, this guy is really, he's really working. He really makes sense. Now that I'm in the tighter spot, I'm going to use, I'm just going to use the eraser on the end of my pencil too. These are often very, very good and they're nice and tight. You can get in there really, really handily. Getting rid of those X and Y axis. And get rid of that end of that triangle. So he's no longer got the pointy nose. And now, and I don't expect you have that, but I'm just going to go in and remove some of those really tiny little lines here. If you do get into drawing animals a bit more and you want to work on detail, this is kind of a fun thing to have, this little, um, little skinny eraser. As I say, it's a Tombow. And I'm going to go in and remove some of those lines down here on his feet. So if you can see now, 
why it's, it's good to not press too hard when you do your scaffolding lines because you do want to be able to erase those. Um, you will definitely be uh, doing some shading over top. So it's, you will, most of those lines will probably end up being covered by, by graphite, by shading marks, but you, there will be spots where you, you don't want to have a line there, like around the, where there's the white around the eye, you don't want to see uh, your scaffolding line. So I've got my basic lines removed here and I'm going to use my trusty little crumb removing brush and get rid of those. Very nice. Okay, he's looking better already. I want to get rid of some of these a little bit dark here. There. Okay. Okay, so there we've got the basic shape of our, our little chipmunk. He's looking great. One thing I would like to do is sort of block out where the, uh, the stripes are on our, the characteristic stripes on our chipmunk. So let's take a look at that. So we can see that that line, that the white mark, is kind of in line with the center of our tail. It's not, a, it's not a, a direct line here. It does swoop down a little bit, but it's kind of at the same level. It's, so it's not really high up his back. It's about the middle of, our, of its body. So let's just draw a very light line here. And you don't have to get this perfect by any means. I'm just going to draw kind of a, a set there so I know that that's approximately where his, uh, his line is. I'm going to go back and take a closer look at his face. I want to work on that muzzle and get the whiskers in place. And then we'll start doing some shading of the, try to get that, create the impression of our chipmunk fur. Okay, so we've got that muzzle. Let's go a little bit tighter here. And I started to do some stippling here. I showed you that. Now one really cool way to do whiskers is to set your pencil down and then pull. Set your pencil down quite firmly and then pull. And, and I'm lifting up slightly as I pull. And if you're not happy with that, you can always erase them. But I'm just able to create a very realistic approach, a, appearance to whiskers. Now, I'm using, um, I'm going in the direction of that whisker growth. So that's always important as we're working on whether it's fur or feathers or scales or skin or whatever. You try to uh, sketch, draw, shade in the direction of your creature's fur growth. That's always extremely helpful. So speaking of fur, let's take a closer look at some of the, the, the tonal values that we have in our little chipmunk, where he is, you know, he's darker in some spots and he's lighter in other spots. If you take a look at your chipmunk, at the image you've got here, at the black and white image, I'll go back up so you can see it here, whoops. Oh, I don't have the black and white one here, sorry. Um, if you squint at him, you'll see that the very darkest part of our little, our little chipmunk is the eye. Or, and it's also very dark here, the, the uh, shadows, the, the, the pigmentation on, the, on, on the either side of our white stripe. So that's going to be a dark area. It's also, we've also got some dark areas around the tail here. I'll move back a bit. There's also some dark areas around the tail where there's what we call backlighting, and we can see that there's a, a darkness here. So let's start with that tail. It's kind of a fun place to start. Going a little bit further over here, get it in, in scope here. So this area here, the tail, if you look at the image that you've got, your reference image, you'll notice that it's darker in this area here. And I'm not going right to the edge of my, where I've drawn my fur lines, it's inside. Because the very tips of our, the very tips of the uh, uh, chipmunk's fur on his tail are actually white. So I'm going to go a little bit darker here and I'm just using the side of my pencil here. Just using the side and I'm going sort of with some rounded shapes here. And I'm trying to keep the edge of my tail, I'm trying to keep from putting graphite down on it. So I'm leaving a little bit of a line, a little bit of a distance between the, the shading that I've done and the, um, and the uh, white part where there's actually bristles or there's some um, white guard hairs on the chipmunk's tail. So uh, that's going to be quite dark and we'll add a little bit of a little layer of graphite all the way over our tail except on the tips where we know that there is white fur. Going to put a li little layer of graphite here and at this point you can use your finger. I don't know if you guys like to do this or not if it's too mucky for you. I know some people in some of my classes don't like to use their fingers but you definitely if you do you definitely want to wash your hands after this. I'm just going to smear it around a little bit with my with my fingers and I'm actually going to pull out. So I'm going to start here and push out towards the edge of my tail. 
So now I'm giving a, I'm moving a little bit of that graphite out to the outside of my chipmunk's tail. So I've got a little bit of darkness here. It's not really super dark, but just a little bit of graphite that's being pulled out towards the edge of the tail. So we're now we're going to go in with the tip of our pencil and I'm going to start adding some lines here. Now remember what I said, we like to keep, we like to keep going in the direction of our tail or our fur growth. So we have some darker lines that come down here. And I'm, the way I did with the whiskers, I'm placing my pencil and then pulling. And I'm able to create the appearance of long furs here. Now the, the tail feather, or the tail feathers, the tail um, uh, hairs here are quite long, as you can see. That's probably the longest fur on the chipmunk's body is at the tail. So I'm going to lay down a whole bunch of these little lines here. And you can't get them exactly as they appear in the drawing. So don't, don't, don't even try to do it exactly as you see. You want to create the appearance. So you're not going to be able to do it exactly as you see. And I'm going to smear it a little bit. Gives it a little bit of a blurry effect. And you just want to make it look like there is dark fur and light fur. So that's what we're doing here. I'm going to go around the edges of my tail. Just create a little bit of some few lines here. We did, a, we laid down a few lines here for our, the tip of our tail. Just darken that up a bit. And I'm going to remove a little bit with my pen, with my eraser, just a smidge. Just give it the appearance of, so there's some almost like, it looks almost like there's light coming through the back of our tail. A little bit darker up here. And you notice it's actually darker along the side here and lighter in the middle. And I, that must be a, the way the light is playing off it. Darker here, and I'm going to smear it again a bit, just give us a nice soft look. The smearing helps the things look a bit softer. Another thing you can use to uh, create that appearance of, of um, making a nice gradient, which is a nice transition from light to dark, you can use what's called a tortillon, which is a, a little kind of a bundle of paper. And it really, it's really a nice effect as well. And I don't happen to have it. I don't use them very often, but a lot of people really, really like them. So I'm just giving some dark, dark edging, dark hairs here. Gonna get some more in here. I don't wanna spend too long in the tail because I wanna get back to the face, which is our critical part of our little fella. But I did want to get, draw your attention to that kind of neat backlighting that we see coming through the tail. And I've, I've it seems to have captured it fairly well down here. And you can pull a little more of that darkness into the light, but just in a jaggedy way. You don't want too much coming into the light, but just a little bit. And it tells us there, there is some, some light coming in from behind the tail here. I'm gonna erase a little bit, a few of those lines. When I first laid down our, our outside form, I went a little bit, a little bit haphazard in my, my lines there. So that's, I'm kind of liking the looks of that so far. But let's turn our attention to, we've only got another 15 minutes. So let's take our, let's take a closer look at our head and then we'll move from the head over to the, the rest of the body. So the head and the eye, the eye, the fur around the eye, as we noticed is quite light. It's got, it is a pigmentation thing. And you'll notice that around the eye, there's kind of a line here. Uh, there's a line that goes on the top of his head. I'll show you on here. We've got kind of a, a line here that moves up his face. It's, it's, um, it's quite a distinct line. It goes over his eye. It starts down here. I'm just gonna block off the area here. I'm gonna block it off just so we have a gentle, very gentle sense of it. It's just kind of like this. And now I'm going to go in with my pencil and start adding in. And again, I'm using the side of my pencil. Actually, my pencil is quite a bit sharper than I would like it to be right now. I'd like it to be a little bit flatter, but that's okay. So I'm just using the side of my pencil and I'm laying down the very gentle shading with my, the tip of my, with the side of my pencil. It's not, sorry, it's not the tip of my pencil, it's the side of my pencil. I'm laying down some nice shading here. And I just went outside the edges of my chipmunk a little bit. I'm gonna erase that a bit. And as we go up the side of the face here, you can see it's a little bit darker. The very darkest part of our chipmunk's uh, fur is as it's curling away from us, as, it's, as it goes around to the other side of the chipmunk. 
So now I've laid down that little bit of graphite here, that kind of shading area. And now I'm using the tip of my pencil to draw little, little tiny lines, just little tiny lines, like the kind of lines you see on your dog or your cat's, the tip of your dog's nose, just little short hairs. And as we get over to the eye, it's a little bit darker above the eye. We've got that white patch here. I'm gonna just kind of define that white patch a little bit better. We can see that. It's a little bit darker right in here. And then it gets darker again up as it curls over the ear. Now we do have uh, some hairs in here. You know, I think I, I need to shape, change the shape of my chipmunk's head a little bit. I think it's a bit more like this. A little bit more like that. This is the kind of thing that as you're working, you might want to change as you go. And I'm realizing it's a little bit more pointed there. That's a bit better. So again, we've got that very dark tip of his nose and I've laid down that layer of graphite. And now I'm just doing some little tiny lines, little tiny marks with my pencil to give the impression that, that there's fur there. If you just had a, a straight surface, that's this colored surface, hard color with no lines in it, it wouldn't really represent, it wouldn't really look like fur. So that's what we're trying to do, is to try to create the appearance of fur. There's the odd little piece of fur, little hair that will stretch, will move out into the lighter area. So I'm, into, I'm trying to replicate that too. And then the back of that ear, the one that's behind his head, we'll try to get some shading in there. And remember we did those lines there around the, sh the edges of the ear. I'm going to shade in while leaving that area white because that's quite light. That's almost the color of the paper. That's one of the lightest parts of our, of our chipmunk is the, the edges of the ear around the eye and the uh, body, the stripe down the body. So those are among the lightest areas of our chipmunk. So we're just working on some dark areas here of our chipmunk. And I'm going to go inside our ear now. There's a dark area inside our ear in that keyhole down here. And I'm going to use the tip of my pencil for sort of circular shading. When you have an area that's really, it's a really tight area and it's hard to go in one direction because it's such a small area, you can always use like the tip of your pencil. And I'm looking for the tip of my pencil that where it's, it's flattened out a bit because I've been using it for the past, you know, I've been using it for whatever, 15 minutes or maybe 10 minutes since I sharpened it last. And as you use it, it wears down, you get sort of flat, you get a flat, flatter spot on the end of your graphite tip. So that is, I'm going to use that angle to kind of do a little bit of shading in here. That keyhole for the ear is quite dark down here. And then it's quite dark right around the edge. And I'm going to try to leave that white area that I had for the, the rim of the ear. I'm going to try to leave that alone. A little bit's been covered up, but that's okay. I'm going in here and there's a bunch of different sure tonalities in here. There's, a, there's some really dark areas. And then there's some lighter areas, like that little area where the the ear, um, I'm not even sure what that's called, like it's where the ear kind of changes shape. So I've tried to capture that. Now that's tricky. I, I really don't expect you all to be able to, to do that. But there is a little bit lighter inside the ear there. If you can capture that, you could always go in and remove a little bit if you can. Working together with your, with your eraser, it's always great fun. So I've got the dark patch on my uh, chipmunk's forehead here. That sort of, it's almost a, almost a triangular patch. And then it comes down over the back here. It's a little bit darker. Now taking a look at, I'm following up the back of my, my chipmunk here, over the back of his head here, there's kind of a, a curve here as we see the muscles, as we see the shape of muscle, kind of, uh, that's the top of his shoulder, I believe. And then it would cur curves up into the back as we have the, you know, the, the rib cage and the muscles around that. So there's kind of a, um, a little uh, dip in here. We want to hot indicate that by shading. So it's going to be a little bit darker in this area here. I'm going to sketch that in and I'm going to move that a little bit sideways so you can see the angle that I'm at is not perfect for doing sideways uh, uh, shading down the side of my body, but I'm going to try that. And it's quite dark along the top of our our stripe, where we started to do the stripe of our squirrel, or sorry, squirrel, our chipmunk. Um, I'm going to fill that in now, just to give it a nice sense of where we're going. So it's dark in here. Now we're starting to really see his little personality come up. And there's a kind of a darker strip on the top too. 
little bit darker there. Now I'm just going to blur a little bit these, the upper one. I'm not going to blur this one because we know that that is quite white and we, there's not, not going to be any kind of gradient in here. I mean, by gradient, I mean like from going from dark to light in a nice smooth, nice smooth um, pattern. We don't want to do that. I'm not going to do that in this area, but I can do it up here because it gets a little bit, it's not, there's not as white a patch uh, in the top of my uh, chipmunk up here as there is down below. Now, if you lay too much down, which I think I just did, I'm going to lift off a little bit with my eraser. There's also uh, um, one of those um, putty erasers that a lot of artists like as well. So those are good. Those are quite, quite handy. But I'm just using my white uh, vinyl eraser. Sometimes if you lay too much down and you just want to lift off, you can kind of dab at it with your, with your vinyl eraser. Helps a lot. So I'm just getting myself a nice little kind of a, a, a coat, a nice light graphite coat under here. It gets a little bit darker as we go towards the rump. A little bit darker and that's because of the shadows because the the way the sun is positioned it gets a little darker over here and then we go over here again it's a little bit darker there and we have another darker area in here and again that's the separation of the that uh, thigh that haunch there and there's a bit of musculature that we're seeing there lay that in I'm going to smear that a bit with my finger this one here too, trying to, I'm going to avoid the white patch, the white stripe though, which is pigmentation. And I'm going to give myself a little bit of a, a um, lay, lay down a little bit of the um, blocking down some shading in here under, over his, uh, just as the back of his front leg there, his front uh, passenger side as I like to call it, in here. And then I'm going to, now that I know the shading, I can see that this is actually going to be quite a bit darker, isn't it? If you do join us on our, our weekly classes, our monthly classes that happen once a week, we will be going over something uh, called a value bar. Now, use, using a value bar, is a, it's like a little ruler, and you can see from uh, one, one, one end is really bright white, like the color of your paper, and the other end is as dark as your pencil will go. So that's a super useful tool for uh, d exactly what we're doing out now. You can hold it up against your animal and say, this is the darkest part. Now, where does this fit in? Where does this fit into the to the uh, the value bar of the or the value structure of my animal so that is one thing that we will be concentrating on more when in our longer classes anyway I'm just going over it quickly now but you, some of you probably uh, are familiar with value bars but if you're not it's a, it's a super useful thing to have if you're getting serious about wanting to create the uh, uh, a realistic appearance of your creature so just blocking off some areas that are darker and we can go in and do a little more shading and down that front leg, got a little bit of shading down the side of it here. Now what we're looking at here is shading that's due to uh, the sun, the, where the sun is in the horizon. Not so much about the color of our, of our chipmunk, not this area here, but about the, where the sun is hitting it. We've got, I've done some dark patches here because you'll notice there's a little kind of a skiff of fur here that it's almost like you can see that on a, on a longer haired dog or a cat you see you know just from bending their their neck in a certain direction you'll see a little bit of fur that's kind of uh, accommodating movement in the neck area so i'm going to do that here i'm going to smear that out a bit and one thing you'll notice is on those white patches you sometimes you'll see a little bit of it's a little bit lighter on top so i've just removed a little bit of that now that's a bit more detailed than perhaps you want but it is there nonetheless and i'm going to carry on with some of my shading here and then over the top of my little fell here. And I'm gonna lay down a little bit more here and we'll get into doing some, some of the, the final lines, like the distinctive um, fur lines that we can draw in. Now right behind that ear, where we see the white rim of his ear, notice that one of the reasons it appears white is because it's dark on this side. It's dark on this side, but it's also dark on this side. Look at those are the same levels of tonality here on the inside the ear and on the other side of the ear. So keep that in mind. So in other words, this part of my, my chipmunk should be as dark as that part of my chipmunk. So I'll go in and darken this area here. I'm gonna lay down a little bit more graphite. So there's really a game, a, a, a dance, as I say, of adding, removing, adding, removing uh, graphite and sort of comparing it to the other regions, the other parts of your animal, the other, whatever, or whatever it is you're drawing. It doesn't have to be just animals, but 
Um, you know, so the value game is really is such an important and useful way to um, understand what you're drawing. So coming down the side here, could have spent a little bit longer on that ear, but that's okay. There's a little bit of a line that goes in here that meets towards the eye. I'm going to concentrate. In the last few minutes we have, I'm going to concentrate on this eye. So uh, that's what I want to do from my last, um, last time here. So I'm going to just carry on working on this eye, uh, doing some of the details around it. Uh, I'm sorry that one of the things that we'll notice with them, um, you'll see that if you do join us, is that it's more interactive. So you, we can actually talk to one another and you can ask questions. So right now you're just able to watch, but um, if you come and join us, then we can actually chat. And I will give you the, I'm going to give you the sort of the farewell right now, but I will stay on a little bit longer while we, uh, while I finish up my eye. But I just want to thank you all so much for tuning in today. Uh, as you know, we believe in the fostering of connections to nature and we run this, this nature sketch program. Um, on a weekly basis. Now what we're doing starting uh, next, next month is going to be our, uh, our um, When We Wake animals. So that's what our chipmunk will pay, play part of the When We Wake. If you're interested in joining us, you can sign in and go to the Learn uh, page of the Bateman Foundation. I think, Duncan, are you able to type this into the side, Duncan, as well, or not? Is there in the chat? Duncan will type in a little bit more detail. But if you sign in and, and sign up for a class you'll, using our, our uh, code, our tree, our code, it's going to be scurry. Scurry is the collective noun for the chipmunk. So a chipmunk comes in a group called a scurry. So that is going to be our code name for, for uh, the month of January, February, March, April, April, when we wake. So we'll be continuing to explore other animals in this, in this uh, in the when we wake as well. And we have the junior online and the adult online. So, and we also have a nature sketch cafe for a very relaxing, casual sort of event of um, nature sketching with illustrator and writer Sue McCartney. So it's a very relaxed, nice kind of event. So Duncan is just typing in to the side there the kinds of programming that we offer. And if you're able to join us, I say you get a 15% discount if you sign up in the next, I think it's the next three or four days to our nature sketch program. So thank you all for joining me. And I will stay on a few for a little bit longer, working away on getting the eye of my chipmunk in space in place and I hope you've enjoyed our time together. What's that, sorry? Captain Lake, uh, oh my gosh, Bob, you turned out great so much. You're a great teacher. Well, that's my friend, Kathy. She's being very nice. That's nice of her. Thank you, Kathy. She's a lovely person.